Welcome to Catherine Viroy Show. Today, I have someone very special with me. Uh, she is very close to my heart, and I'm welcoming her with, with the whole, whole heart and mind. Welcome, Ilona. I'm so happy to have you here. Hello, Catherine. I'm really, really glad uh, uh, that I'm participating in your show. Um, thanks for inviting me. It's uh, such a pleasure to communicate with you every single time. Oh, thank you. You're so kind. <laughs> a pleasure is all mine. Uh, you live in Luxembourg now, but would you like to share a little bit about your your life story, where you were born, grown up, where you were educated, and how everything actually unfolded until you came to the Luxembourg? Uh, yes, of course. Um, I was born in Serbia, uh, and I finished my studies uh, of psychology in Novi Sad in Serbia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I finished uh, the first cycle, the master and uh, the doctorate in uh, psychology. And I um, investigated and researched for my psychological PhD thesis, uh, a cross-cultural uh, study uh, related to all the factors that contribute uh, to well-being and the satisfaction in a life. And I searched for the differences between Serbia and France. Um, uh, Ten years ago, I moved to France. Um, I lived there um, for a few years. Uh, we changed a lot. We moved a lot. And uh, at one point, we arrived uh, close to the Luxembourg, uh, where we started to work. Um, there were many conditions, actually, to start to work in Luxembourg. Uh, they are actually really strict uh, when we talk about those conditions. Uh, so my PhD thesis um, were rec was recognized uh, firstly in uh, Paris and then after also in Luxembourg. Uh, and as I speak uh, three languages, I had all uh, the conditions actually to start to work in uh, Luxembourg, uh, which I'm really grateful for. This actually sounds a little bit romantic because your PhD was accepted in Paris. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how is life yes. how is life in luxembourg um well um it's fine it's a small country um in the center of europe um it's really interesting because um luxembourg is surrounded by many countries actually so we have france uh, germany netherlands belgium around us so uh, we need maybe 20 to 30 minutes to, to move around. Uh, so that can be actually the opportunity to uh, make some short trips, actually, uh, on a daily basis even. Uh, so um, uh, Luxembourg is really a small country, as I said. Um, uh, we have maybe half a million of people who live there. Uh, but uh, I think... We have also about half a million people who uh, do not live in Luxembourg. They live in uh, those countries um, that are based around the Luxembourg and they are traveling every day, which is actually um, a thing that makes uh, life in Luxembourg in some way stressful because of the traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. All the people got used to that traffic, but it really uh, brings a lot of stress to people. Uh, normally, people uh, are passing uh, between 30 minutes uh, to two hours in order to come to their workplace uh, every morning. So most of them are taking a rest once they arrive finally, mm -hmm. uh, which can be really stressful. Um, but in general, Luxembourg is a country that brings a lot of opportunity for uh, opportunities for highly educated people. Um, and uh, it's um, a multinational, multicultural uh, country mm -hmm. um, where uh, we have more than 170 nations. Uh, mm -hmm. So all of us, we are actually surrounded by many differences, um, mm -hmm. uh, many languages daily, uh, which actually uh, creates 
um, a reference frame, a mental frame that is in some way flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, we all actually uh, learn uh, to accept many, many differences uh, while uh, living or working in mm -hmm. Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. um, you, you are actually uh, living in the epicenter of the modern world, what we used to say in Europe, one of the most richest countries in, in, in the Europe. Um, and that kind comes with a lot of challenges, a few of them you just mentioned. But uh, when we talk about uh, um, work-life balance or we talk about um, living in an environment like that, it's it's very, very similar, uh, I have to say, to, to what, what I heard from my American clients. Um, actually, um, how do people deal with that? I guess that you work with a lot of people from corporations uh, and... Um, their work day is very long. Uh, also, they might be parents and so on and so forth. So this is a, a very, very hot topic. And uh, you as a mental health expert, I guess that you're helping a lot of people. So how in a fuzzy environment like that, someone can find their purpose, someone mm -hmm. can be connected to themselves, actually mm -hmm. live a fulfilled life and maybe even move to the high achievement and how you can help with that. Okay. Uh, so uh, I will start um, from the fact that it mm -hmm. depends really on many factors how someone um, live or function in Lux Luxembourg because um, depending on the fact uh, where you exactly live. Not only in uh, Luxembourg, will... not only in Luxembourg, in, in, in a kind of a capitalistical country, in, in yes. a kind of mm -hmm. a country which is uh, perceived mm -hmm. as very, very fast forward, as very, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. developed, uh, like the Western world. So mm -hmm. uh, they are facing with a lot of, uh, I guess, burnout and a lot of challenges in their everyday life. So uh, mm -hmm. how you as a mental health professional can help people around the world with topics like this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes of course uh well yes definitely uh as you said luxembourg is the second richest country in the world and it has its own price uh life is really stressful i do work in a highly stressful environment and sometimes it can be really hard actually to try to live differently when we are surrounding surrounded by that stress and um that kind of lifestyle Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, hopefully we all have always a freedom of choice how we will function, work and live. Um, but yes, definitely uh, people are in general having really an issue uh, with uh, a willingness uh, to have that work-life balance, um, especially if they are parents. And that's why the structure of the, the family is one of the factors that actually dictates uh, the way we live and function uh, for the people who do not have kids, actually, uh, for them is uh, definitely more easy, uh, easier actually to, to live and work in Luxembourg. Uh, also, it depends on, on the fact um, that they can work in a private sector or in governmental sector. And yes, definitely, definitely I can confirm as I work with people from private sector that this sector is highly stressed. Uh, environment and um, people uh, in the private sector are uh, mostly working long hours and staying uh, really until late in their uh, their workplaces and they're missing that kind of work-life balance. Um, mostly they are also, uh, most of them, uh, highly educated, ambitious people um, who were in some way preconditioned to function in an environment like that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I say often um, that, well, uh, if we are experiencing burnout, uh, mostly um, something inside of us uh, led us to that state of being. Um, mostly uh, if we um, are uh, having uh, a perfectionism, 
uh, or workaholism, uh, if we are not able uh, to put limits at our workplaces, if uh, we do not know how to communicate in an assertive way, we can easily really fall into the burnout process. Um, for ambitious people, for people on high positions, it can be really, really hard actually uh, to say no, <laughs> to, to create some space for, for themselves, etc. But it's important actually uh, to prioritize things and um, not to wait to experience such uh, state it's being as burnout or some kind of disease uh, in order to change things. Um, mostly we have, um, uh, especially after uh, a COVID uh, uh, period, after pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, more and more people uh, who wants to uh, uh, get out from, uh, of the system because they experienced a different life for the first time in their life. Well, while... that's, that's a good news for me, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I'm sending all of them to you. That's very good news for me. <laughs> I guess I have to come to Luxembourg. Yes, I know uh, with whom I will connect all of them. <laughs> uh, yes, but um, those are good news because, um, uh, well, it was really hard and um, stressful during uh the the covid pandemic but uh on the other side uh we saw um that we can have different approaches to reality that we have different options that we all have uh the possibility actually to work and have a private life um at the same time uh, to create for ourselves some kind of um lifestyle where we'll, we will be active in our private life and professional life at the same time. So most of the people working in companies experience for the first time uh, during the pandemic, uh, actually that work-life balance, and then they lost it uh, uh, once they actually came back to, to their offices. Mm -hmm. But um, already after some time, after a few weeks in an old known rhythm um, they started to question things uh, so we have more and more people who are uh, taking a part-time uh, who are asking actually to work two or three days per week at home uh, we have really lots of people who are stepping out from the system in order to uh, create uh, their own businesses and become freelancers um, which is great uh, because we all need those freelancers as well. We all need those small businesses in order uh, to function well. Um, and companies, they will survive, actually. Of course. <laughs> like, yeah. We are all changeable. When we work in companies, we are actually changeable. And uh, if we do not want, uh, we have a list of people who are impatiently waiting to enter there those are mostly young people um who just got uh, graduated and they actually want to build their career and that's a kind of uh, natural but... thing because they they were taught like Absolutely. that when they get yes. in our age they will understand there is another way <laughs> i joke a little bit about this these are very serious topics but yes. I, I wish to sprinkle a little bit of joy because there is a way out there is a way to with with, uh, with the help of professionals like you and the help of professionals who know how to do other kinds of things, it really is, it really is possible. Uh, but when we talk about our life purpose, I think that's very, very important because that's one of the most uh, powerful drivers that can help us to actually do what we love instead of what we have to do to to live a life because Neil Donald Walsh said what life taught us is that we are born we go to school we finish college we start working 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 we go to retirement we die that's not life okay so one of the things that that we need to be connected with is is our why and our purpose so that we uh, gain that inner strength and inner power to allow ourselves to try mm -hmm. Yes. Do you notice people are waking up and actually, you know, trying to reconnect with themselves, uh, especially you as a mental health professional? Do you see the change 
how the wind is blowing into direction of what real life is and how I can do this differently. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, it's such an important topic. I am um, really often uh, mentioning my grandfather to my clients. He was um, in a field of agriculture and he had that passion uh, for his work. He lived until 91 year and uh, he was singing actually while he was uh, doing his job he was free actually from system he never had a chief and he was really balanced man mm -hmm. uh, and I'm trying to do the same for myself although I am highly educated I uh, consider really important to say um, that um, in order to create that life balance and to come to our purpose um, which is the precondition to have a really balanced life uh, we need to put aside the ego. So uh, no matter the level of our education, no matter uh, um, uh, the people's expectations, uh, it's up to us to put aside our ego and to look into that other part of us that is, in my opinion, really more important. And uh, that other part is related to the soul, actually, um, I'm uh, using different knowledges um, while working with people, different knowledges from the rational psychology, but also um, I'm always really, really interested uh, in um, giving uh, to, to the people that approach that is related to the spiritual psychology as well. Uh, so if we are really um, ready to look inside of us and to ask ourselves those questions, what I'm really good in, what are my hidden talents, um, how was I when I was a kid, uh, is there something that I put it aside maybe, but I really loved to do, uh, but then everybody advised me to mm -hmm. become an engineer or manager or well something important and then I simply forgot how I really adore to mm -hmm. play the instrument or to paint or to help people that is uh, something that people are mostly mentioning when we are talking about uh, the purpose in life uh, it's sometimes uh, really easy uh, mm -hmm. to recognize what it is because we know inside of us that we are actually hiding that part mm -hmm. and that we are actually uh, doing what you just described while living that one year every uh, single year and call it a life but we know that there is something uh, more behind uh, that and um, happily we have all those people who are showing uh, us today that it is really possible it is possible to find way out and it is possible to reconnect with ourselves mm -hmm. even though we actually disconnected uh, from ourselves five years ago or even 35 years ago when we actually uh, just decided to follow some kind of um, popular. Um, and actually you you and I are, are the living proof of that. Mm -hmm. So it's not like this conversation is just theoretical both you and I are doing what we love in our own way. And, uh, you know, a few days ago, I had my first TV segment that was like out of yes. my reach a few years ago. And I had my media consultant, right. of course, and one of my best mm -hmm. friends is a PR. So yeah, I have support and I have you. Uh, by the way, guys, she, she's my therapist. Whenever I said I go to, yeah, that's the girl. Uh, uh, what I wanted to say is that my PR told me, uh, you were hiding behind programming. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That hit me very, very, very deep because that's the truth. Uh, I never allowed myself to, to go out, mm -hmm. to speak, to be who I truly am until I've realized that I'm enough and that I really can do that. Now, when we mention that, there is a little bit of paradox here. You mentioned ego. We need to put the ego aside and on the other side there is a high achievement. Now, high achievement is perceived mm -hmm. as something which is ego-driven. But I would like us to sprinkle a little bit of light because high achievement in terms of the world where I am working with a mission to help people to do what I love, what they love is 
uh, being louder mm -hmm. for the sake of fulfilling my purpose and helping as many people as I can, not for the sake of the award or whatever the society acceptance is. Now, let's talk about the fact that every single one of us is enough, that we have mm -hmm. all the resources inside yes. of us, that people are mostly mm -hmm. afraid to step out because they don't know how and they are afraid of unknown. Mm -hmm. While when they learn how and see it is possible, they will mm -hmm. give them a chance. Mm -hmm. And connect mm -hmm. that to the high achievement, which doesn't have explicitly to mean um society wars uh material things but the high mm -hmm. achievement in terms of really fulfilling that purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes it's a really great subject it takes courage to live actually fully and truly uh it's not easy especially if we were conditioned to believe that if we follow uh, our ego or ego of our authorities, for example, um, we will be in some way fulfilled or successful. Um, there are, however, uh, people who do good, actually. They are at their workplaces. Uh, they are not um, in some way experiencing that flow or in some way being connected deeper uh, with their jobs, but they accepted that. Um, and it's, it's not to be judged, actually. But on the other side, we have more and more people who really want to feel good while they are uh, working. And uh, I'm here not talking about some kind of happiness or excitement about the job, uh, no, I am talking about one um, perspective um, in modern psychology uh, that um, is new and, in my opinion, really, really important to talk about. And that is that eudaimonistic approach, because mm -hmm. uh, obviously uh, today we live in a hedonistic society and uh, hedonism itself nourishes our ego we want to feel good we want to actually be acknowledged we want to be important we want to feel good all the time but it's not possible and it's not healthy it will not lead us uh, far away from the place where we are at the moment uh, there is that other perspective that i searched in my uh, phd thesis uh, that is related to all those subjects that you are are mentioning and that is a calm type of happiness where we are actually not trying to prove anything we are not mm -hmm. trying to do things because we want to have um, a better appearance no we are doing things because we want to feel good about what we are doing we want to feel that we are con contributing to this world we want to have some kind of deeper sense in our lives we want to live truly and fully um, but it doesn't mean that we uh, need to feel excited in some way so when we are talking about deeper purpose is always it's always um, a part of us that is related to uh, a calm helping uh, happiness so when we are actually a kind of a joy right yes it's a kind of a yes joy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's a kind of a joy and when we are uh, doing the thing that we really love we are mostly experiencing a flow um, we are becoming one with what we are doing because uh, actually we are expressing our own talents and uh, we are expressing a love related to mm -hmm. what we are actually doing um, when I uh, work with people uh, in companies who experience that kind of calling to contribute more uh, or in a different way, um, uh, mostly um, they start to actually search for the options. Uh, there are some people who just quit and that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But on the other side, we have Hopefully, people who stay in companies, but they introduce into their work that human touch. Uh, they are actually starting to 
for example, as managers uh, starting to create some events in order for people to connect. They are starting to fight for the sector in company that will be related to some kind of human perspective. Mm -hmm. um, they are starting to um, develop uh, communicational and um, uh, skills related to emotional intelligence, etc. Mm -hmm. And by that, they are staying in the system, but they are actually trying to function as human beings, although they are uh, on some kind Kind of high position uh, so I think that today we in general uh, need more people uh, like that and more managers uh, like that because uh, it creates uh, an atmosphere where people will feel uh, respected and be able also uh, to express some kind of human perspective at they their workplaces. They will feel belonging they will yes. feel belonging to the organization they work for. I actually yeah. noticed two trends. One trend is that some companies are actually creating communities. Like I was doing a few speeches in communities like that. And uh, also uh, employees are changing their, like with younger generations, a lot of different energy is actually spreading through the corporations and they are changing. Uh, they need to adjust to these new trends, definitely. Mm -hmm. But what I think mm -hmm. it's it's very important is that you mentioned, and I will definitely support that, is that once I accepted myself as someone who can do what, what I love, yes. once I started truly walking my talk, being authentic and not caring at all about mm -hmm. the acceptance of the outside yes. world, and what's very mm -hmm. interesting the biggest mm -hmm. opportunities, the biggest awards, the biggest things that ever happened, happened when I refocused from caring about achieving results to caring mm -hmm. about creating a legacy and the hearts I actually touched. I believe the energy which we live through everything that we do has a great impact. And that's our responsibility to be louder about in a good sense, about what we do, what we can bring to the world and actually help people. So how do you explain this? Not focusing to the result, focusing to how the people feel when they work with me got me much better results than I could ever dream about. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because of the fact uh, that, uh, as I'm sure from the very beginning uh, of uh, your work as uh, an entrepreneur, you saw how much you can actually contribute by being yourself. Because uh, in my opinion, uh, you are serving as an example to all of us. Um, I can say um, for myself uh, the same thing as as you mentioned about you we have some kind of similar stories um as you said i thought i will be that person actually my grandfather that i mentioned he was so happy that i will be highly educated etc it will bring me an easier life but then when i saw that if i follow my education and my ego i will have a harder life because i will not have a life i will have only a job and i will not have a family and it got really really complex and complicated mm -hmm. uh, there i was ready as you to recognize who i am so what i actually really want for myself and my life how i would like my life to be and then adapt the work actually into that kind of um, uh, defined personality and defined identity uh, mm -hmm. completely separated from the ego and then I started actually to work as an entrepreneur in Luxembourg but since I met you uh, who actually got to know yourself really well and started to do your job still learning is really, really still learning important. <laughs> Uh, I actually create um, a space in my head that never existed before uh, because you really showed me that uh, there are no limits, that uh, we all have many, many, many choices. And depending on our own limits, 
uh, we will experience uh, less or more satisfaction from working. So it's not only um, necessary in some way to get to know us better or to be aware of our purpose in life. It's also really important to connect with people who passed um, a path uh, that is different, that can actually make us grow all the time. Because I think that that's, that growth is something that really uh, people miss if they uh, do not live in an authentic way. And once they start to get to know themselves better mm -hmm. and live in authentic way, led by, by their own purpose, they feel that they're growing all the time and there are no limits. So that's something that you showed me and I'm really, really grateful for. Um, Thank you so much. Well, you helped me heal my my wombs from the past and I shared my experiences and knowledge with you so this is the way I would like to see world developing through collaboration not competition because yes, if we are in the competitive mode we actually strive to achieve results and there is a lot of pressure and negative energy while mm -hmm. when you do what you love you're doing your thing who likes it, likes it. Who doesn't like it, who cares? So <laughs> that's, that's the whole deal. We kind of survive. <laughs> you work with uh, uh, people uh, in Luxembourg uh, in an office, but you also work online with people one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But I know that you are preparing something new. So anyone who would like to work with you, they can reach out to you through social media or they can send a message to me and I will connect you. Uh, mm -hmm. if they want to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. But tell us a little bit about what you are preparing uh, for the future, because I think mm -hmm. that's going to be uh, very, very, very important and uh, it will touch a lot more people than you can actually serve one-on-one, -on -one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Uh, that's why I say that um, this uh, way of working is only the base of my business and you showed me that actually that there are many many uh, levels um, to achieve uh, in order to uh, have even more freedom and more flexibility in our uh, work and at the same time to be able to serve as much as people as possible so uh, for the moment I am working in Luxembourg with individuals and I'm planning to start to work with groups as I worked with groups earlier in Serbia and I really adore working with groups I love that atmosphere uh, as well uh, and I'm creating at the moment a program uh, that is called Live But Truly. Uh, and in that program, I will uh, try to collect all the knowledge that I'm having. Um, and I am, in general, um, approaching people in a holistic way uh, because I'm actually really trying to uh, use uh, the knowledge I'm having from different fields in psychology, as I already said. So developmental psychology, uh, psychotherapy approaches, spiritual psychology, etc. And uh, when working with individuals, um, I am really uh, trying to approach uh, every person in a personalized way uh, because uh, I am perceiving people like that as completely unique uh, and I'm always exciting um, to get to know better the new person coming to me because it's a whole world that I am holistically approaching mm -hmm. uh, but still I think that uh, well there are some uh, um, uh, well rules of a life or subjects that we can actually collect uh, in our signature programs. That is something that you are helping me with. Uh, and I am also really exciting to bring to the market something that is also completely personalized and in some way related to my experience in working with people. Well, I know a little bit, but I can't wait to see it on the sunshine. So, yeah, thank you so, so much for being my guest. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for who you truly are. Thank you for being one of my greatest supports in life. I truly adore you, and I hope that we will meet soon. Love you so much. Bye-bye.
Thank you. Bye.